Hello and welcome to episode 52 of Off the Bandstand. My name is Christian Wiggs, I am your host. Today's episode is Ephraim Owens, a true Austin treasure that spans across several genres with jazz being at the heart of it all. Ephraim has held a residency spot at the Continental Club Gallery for the past 14 years every Tuesday and has performed and recorded with notable musicians such as Mumford & Sons, Sheryl Crow, Patty Griffin, and Gary Clark Jr. and in 2018 was inducted into the Austin Music Hall of Fame. In this episode, we talk about the equal importance of silence versus sound in his pursuit of honesty. We also talk about his ascension to the top of the Austin music scene in the 90s, resulting in the officially recognized local holiday, Ephraim Owens Day, and those moments when you're on top of the world and then the universe sends a normal set of stairs as the ultimate humility check. Now, moving on to the release of the week, this is called Desnudo from Alton Sinclair. It is the first single he has coming up off of his new record called Reconnected, which is a bold and deeply personal project that merges the two distinct cultures that define his identity. And this record features a cordless trio of Alton, Utah Hamrick, and Daniel Dufour with guest artists Roxy Koss and Pete Rodriguez. If you want to go and support this release directly, you can go over to his website, which is altonsinclairmusic.com. You can also go over to his band Bandcamp, which is altonsinclair.bandcamp.com. And for all things Alton all the time, you can go check out his Instagram handle, which is at Alton Sinclair Music. Now moving on to the Monk Shows of the Week that will be happening exactly where I'm sitting. You can tune in on Thursday, August 5th to catch Monty Warden in The Dangerous Few. The very next night, Friday, August 6th, you can catch JARS, which stands for Just a Rhythm Section. Skipping Saturday and moving on to Sunday, August 8th, it's going to be Jazz PR, which stands for Jazz Puerto Rico. And then on Tuesday, August the 8th, you can catch Bruce Saunders Quintet. So that is it for all of the music happening this week. Go and check out Alton's single, Desnudo, and support that over on Spotify, Bandcamp, you name it, it's there. Uh, and then tune in to all of the Monk shows as well to support live jazz happening here on the beautiful east side of Austin, Texas. And a special thank you to everyone who tuned in last Tuesday to the Christian Wiggs Big Band Show. There is more coming, there is more on the way, I promise. Uh, and that was just a truly surreal night and I am so thankful for everyone that has tuned into the show and has continued to watch it since then. So let's dive into today's episode. Here is episode 52, Ephraim Owens. This is Off the Bandstand. <laughs> total sense how have you measured that like um, how have you measured that ability to measure your expectations or your discernment of like a certain situation over the years because I feel like that that is something that people do a lot where where you know like, again Pete Holmes we were talking about him like just before we started but people talk about how you know someone will make a certain joke at a, at a, at a, a show of his or someone makes a crack off stage and he'll take that super personally and it'll just like put him in a bad headspace for the yeah. rest of the night and like right. his his art his like you know his comedy is like not the same and then he's like I'll go home and I'll get like a few hours removed from it or like the next morning and I'll go oh that was nothing that was nothing. It was right. nothing at all. They meant nothing by it, and mm -hmm. it was just having fun. And I have that all the time. I overthink everything. And that's one of the things <laughs> that I like. You know, I've been doing a lot of meditation recently too, and 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 you know, I, I really like to put a meditation on before bed every night. You know, because I just feel like, it, a, it puts me in a good mind set to because like if if I don't, my head's going to be spinning on like ideas or just like processing the day or whatever. Um, you know, but but having that that time to really kind of decompress and think about things and, and see things for what they were as opposed to how we were interpreting it right. in the moment. Like, there are things, you know, not to be too meta about it, but there are things where, like, you know, I talk on this show and I feel like some way about it, and then I go back and I'm in the editing process, and I go, oh my gosh, I'm, uh, I'm going to cringe when that part comes up. I know that I felt so <laughs> uncomfortable. Oh, I and, then, and then I realize, oh, and I have Lydia watch it, and she goes, what are you talking about? Nothing happened. 
Right. And I'm like, oh no, it was just my insecurity. So over the years, on stage or off stage, how have you kind of been able to get a, a handle on that? And to what extent have you been able to? Mm. You asking me not as yeah, 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 I'm asking you. I, yeah. I mean, I, 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 you know, it's just, I can't worry. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, I mean, can't overthink. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like just uh, being, you know, just being, being honest with the moment, you mm. know. It's one of the hardest things. It's like, and it's something I've been, uh, yeah, been uh, thinking about for a long time. It's like yeah. being, you know, being in the moment, like, like just really experiencing this. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, that that out there, but you know, I mean, we're here to serve. You know, we gotta do our job. We gotta, yeah. you know, I mean, we wanna, you know, nobody, no, no one should have any kind of power over, you know, your spirit, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, you know, um, and, you know, it's a trip when I start shushing and hushing people. Yeah, know? yeah. It's sure. like, it's a trip <clears throat> at the gallery, you know, kind of, you know, yeah, upstairs. Right, yeah, sure. Oh, uh, it, was, it was so loud. I mean, I thought it was loud, but, you know, I'm on stage. Mm -hmm. And and um, and I, I, I said something. I just got worked up, you know, yeah. like so loud you know and then i'm looking out like i was talking about earlier you know seeing the people that's kind of like annoyed by what's going on behind them and yeah and you know some just don't care you know and i got on the mic you know and i just and i you know said whatever and um then i realized like a lot of people didn't even i mean they were so captivated or just a part of the music in yeah. the moment that i broke them from being where they were sure. by, you know, so it's like this fine line of like, what do you say? You know, I mean, or do you say anything? I, yeah. It's and it's a constant like, it's a juggle. You know, like, I mean, I've definitely backed down. You know, a lot of like, <laughs> you know, just, you know, spitting things out. Yeah, you know, sure. like, yeah, be a little more reserved and a little more patient, and and then find a, you know. A softer, calmer way of yeah. like, you know, trying not to offend. Yeah. I mean, because you don't want to lose fans. Exactly. You know, you don't right. want to lose people. You want to, you know, you want to embrace them, but like uh, at the same time, like know that there's an etiquette to this music. Yeah. And so, you know, <clears throat> tell them that, you know, and that's what I, you know. Well, it's no different than like a, like a romantic or otherwise relationship, right? It's like you, you may love being together. But there are going to be certain things that make you tick, and it's not like, all right, now we now we call it quits. Now we say like, you know, I'll save the expletives for for off camera. But like, you know, screw you. Like we don't, it, we're done. We're done. But clean clean break. You you if if you're mature about it, you come to a thing and you say, look, this this upsets me, and here's why. Mm. And it's just setting like guidelines and expectations, not even as an authority figure, but just as this like kind of like honest organic thing of like. Look, we're sharing something together. I think that's exactly. that's the difference of, of of being musicians and working at like a retail store, right? Like yeah. that's mm -hmm. like I mean, of course, people should be nice to people at retail stores. That's, yeah, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. But you know, like that's very kind of like here's a product, and now I'm selling it to you, and you swipe your card and whatever. This is like we're giving something that is the most profoundly personal thing possible. Absolutely. And if we don't treat this as an equal kind of relationship thing where we're tending to each other's like thoughts, feelings, emotions, presentness, et cetera, then we're not going to be able to experience this to the, to the most of what we could. I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. it is. I yeah. mean, that, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Now there it is. That's that silence that I do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, no, man. The, the silence. I think we've we've grown accustomed to this feeling that everything needs to be super fast paced. And, and, oh, we need to know like exactly what to say. Like I'd much rather somebody take a little bit of time. Yeah, I can't help but to. Yeah, it drives people crazy too. Yeah. Just like mm, you know? no, man. <laughs> I mean, because I talk slow already. You know, and and, and then it's like I can get um. You know, um, 
I don't know, you know, I like to think before I, I, I speak, you know, kind of thing. How about that? That's a maturity, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, and, um, yeah, it's, the, yeah, what you were just saying, uh, like, there, there, there's a relationship that happens um, with what we're offering, and, like, you, it's like, I wish I could live my life the way I, I um, I play music or I live mm -hmm. music, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I need to be doing more with, you know, in my, you know, chatting and all that. But, but like when I play, you know, I couldn't be more honest. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's going to be all truth. You know, I might, you know, I might lie today. Yeah. You know, I might, um, you know, um, uh, do something, I don't know, yeah. something, yeah, you know, sure, but, sure. But um, you know, playing playing you know playing music is just like the most genuine um, part of my soul. Yeah. I mean, you know, I wish I somehow it's gonna sync up. I don't think I don't think it'll ever be. I don't think my <laughs> yeah, it's that's, that's quite a statement I'm about to make. But um, please make it ever get to that that point of like where I'm complete and like the daily walk and yeah. the daily hang, you know. I don't think I, you know. Um, I mean, I always try to strive, should try to strive, but mm. I mean, music is just, I mean, playing is just, it's right there. It is, yeah. and it just, it, it pours out, you know, and then, um, yeah, I thank God for it, you know, like that being, an honest outlet, you yeah. know, being able to like express and, and, and you know, and and, and 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 see and feel when people get it, you know. Yeah. Oh man, you know. When that locks, I mean, that's like the most intoxicating thing, right? When you can yeah. tell that the vibe is right. Like when we were doing the, you know, big band hit a couple nights ago here in in this room, there was a tune. There's a standard called never let me go I'm oh sure. i love it yeah. have yeah. you heard roy yeah. sing it yeah 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 and it's honest yeah well, I, I cry right now yeah well, i mean i yeah yeah and just doing that tune and you know mm. and just everything going still for a moment and everybody being along for the ride with you mm. i mean there's nothing yeah. more you know i think again i said earlier i'm still young but like Especially when I was younger, I would try to be like, all right, I got to have these perfectly crafted little banters in between tunes or whatever. And, and after that tune ended, I was just kind of like, I don't want to talk for a second. Yeah. Like, I want to like, it would be a disservice to what we just did up here if I were to be like, and the next tune's going to be, yeah. no, man. Yeah. Like, like, let a let moment. It, yeah, linger. let it breathe. Yeah. Let it, yeah, let it sink in. Yeah. 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 It's How an important you, thing, yeah. you know. It's, um... I mean, it's like, you know, it, it kind of it trips me out of, 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 of um, like, somebody showing up to a gig and, and they have the set list. This is what we're going to do tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I mean, <clears throat> is this what we're going to do tonight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, how, how, can you, how can you judge your night? When you haven't even, you know, you haven't even introduced yourself or, or been introduced to the crowd, you know, that you is... don't even know where they at, you know. I mean, you don't know what kind of vibe, you know. The front table might need a ballad, yeah, right. you know. Yeah, we're not gonna play that song now because maybe they could, you know, over there, you know, something's going on and, and you know, maybe need a little pick me up. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. And, and, um, and yeah, you know, so it's like set list, yeah. Of course, you should have. Yeah, yeah well, mean, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. you know an idea. You know, and it's an idea. It's 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 a framework. Loose, yeah, loose. It's, yeah, it's like worst comes to worst. I know what we can play, but all of these can be audibles if we need them to be. There it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Try, I love that that you said that. It's like trying to judge how the evening's going to go. How, trying to you know, and and somebody said this the other day, you know, and, and by no means am I, you know, calling this person out because I, I know exactly what they were doing and, and they're, they're a beautiful human for doing it, but they were uh, wanting to, it, it was, it was a, I'll just say it was a big occasion 
and they were planning they were trying to plan what they were going to write on Instagram like for after the big thing happened oh. and they were like yeah this is just like a big deal for like a multitude of different reasons I just want to make sure I get it right you know um, and it was very it was a very sentimental set of things and I was like man like you that totally fine to write that out but at the same time like maybe just wait and see how you feel afterwards and let mm. whatever comes to you in that moment because what you write before might be completely different from, I mean, think about how many times we, you know, plan a show because we've seen another person play in a venue, we've never played in that venue and we think, oh, it's gonna be this grandiose thing and then we get on stage. It's, it's kind of like that thing we were talking about again off camera where it's like you go to the elephant room and the way you view the stage from the audience mm -hmm. and then you step up on stage, that room gets really small, you yeah. know? So it's all about that perspective and you can't anticipate perspective. Right. You just gotta wait for that to be there. Right. You know. Um, yeah. How yeah. do you, you know, how do you balance or how have you balanced the ability to accommodate your audiences without compromising your own integrity of the honesty that you're doing? Because we talk about, you said that table might need a ballot, this one might need a mm. pick me up. Um, and so then, to a certain extent, it's, it, it's very outward focused. It's less like, I don't mean selfish in like a negative connotation, but like it's less focused on self and it's more focused on them, right? right? But then it may not be the truest extent of what you yourself want to play. And it's like a relationship give and take. Right. So how have you balanced that of, of being true to yourself of everything that you want to play and trying to be accommodating at the same time? Uh. Uh, you know, I mean, I'd, <laughs> I I sort that out when I'm there. You know, <laughs> I I mean, I yeah, I mean, I like I depend on the band a lot too. You know, like uh, as of um, like where they at. You know, like whatever. You know, um, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's a, that's the other thing. You know, it's like you know, you got. Musicians, so this is the, you know this is the telephone. This is the this is the you know you know we all the lines to each yeah. other you know and um, I you know I never feel like it's my band mm -hmm. you know it's just and, and so um, it's like yeah if, if I'm you know if I'm kind of stuck on like. You know, I'm seeing, you know, the heads kind of bopping on this tune, you know, yeah. like, right, you know, or, uh, and yeah, I get, get in that corner of like, okay, yeah, what are we going to do next? They were mm -hmm. vibing off of that. Do we keep that vibe going? Yeah. Or do we, you know, I mean, ballads is the hardest part of the night to like stick in. You want to play it, but then, yeah, but you know, it's like, shit, like yeah, you know, it's like, yeah. I got to make this really, really pretty, you know, <laughs> you got to get them in, you know, but. So exposed to. Yeah, you know, so it's like, I guess to get outside of my own head, you know, and, and you know, um, it's like, you know, see what, do you know, what do you, what y'all think? I asked yeah. Sean, you know, like, yeah, let's play blah, blah, blah. However you want to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, sure. and, You know, and it's like, the way it's not on my show anymore, you know, it's yeah. like. Not that there should be a weight at all, but it's like, um, you know, I'm, I'm just relieved to, to be able to, to, to do that. And, and, mm. and then it's like, this is where th that needed to be, you yeah, know? Yeah, right. Thank you for, you know, getting me out of that, you know, you know answering that, that, yeah. that, fixing my own, um, I guess, um, Denial, or I, yeah, because sometimes I mean, I, I mean, me being the overthinker that I am, mm. it's like I, you know, I can't get into that realm of like, you know, the crowd is just, it's you know, they they not vibing at all, but then they yeah. might be loving. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, and, you know, so it's like then I get inside, you know, it's just like. Oh, we know we need to play something faster. We need to play something. Okay, yeah. okay, let's play another faster one. You know, what I'm <laughs> and you, it's oh like, man, you are, you are, you are like I'm just. My heart is just going like that because yeah. you're, you're speaking to everything that I feel all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and then it's like that. The, it's just like what they uh, like what the cats 
play whatever you want to play. We got you know we got yeah. You're fine, you know. You know yeah. if you know if they ain't vibing, if they you know clapping, if they, it's like you know we shouldn't be looking for approval anyway. You know, you know we wanna we wanna. Um, I mean, if we're being honest, <laughs> then we're being honest. Somebody's gonna get it. You yeah. know, yeah. More than you know, and I, you know I tell them that too. You know, it's like when they get you know rowdy and and and. Um, or oh shoot, when they get quiet, you know, that's I, that that makes me nervous because you know mm -hmm. we used to playing in these choices. It's like yeah. it's all that's going on. And it's like when it's quiet, it's like yeah, because yeah, somebody break a glass or something, you know, like <laughs> just something to, to um, you know. Um, I don't know. Um, Do you think that musicians are? uncomfortable with silence because of the fact that it focus it, it, it forces us to focus on our own vulnerability yeah I mean you know lulls are, are, are I mean it's just like conversations yeah you know feeling like you need to that's the thing I mean that's what it is that's what music is this conversation and, yeah. and, and you know yeah you know um, yeah, when you're sitting there in that silence, yeah, it's 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 hard not to to want to feel that space. But yeah. that's the you know, I think that's the sweet spot, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, space is is you know just like you know Miles and the Autocast, you know, it's like yeah, you know, um, it's like you know giving some you know they got you know we got to breathe, they got to breathe, you know, there shouldn't mm. be. Um, We all, we all just, you know, just it's it's cool to like, you know, just a little time to absorb, like we were saying yeah. earlier, you know. Um, yeah, got um, yeah, own that, own that space and that that, you know, that um, that blank, you know, gotta gotta yeah, you gotta provide that. Yeah. You know. Well, when you embrace that space too, I mean, there's so much power in that, right? Yeah. When when you can take take control over that, what otherwise will control you? Because silence is so control. We, uh, you know, we talk about how, you know, there's there's that need to like you know talk really fast and and, and fill yeah. space just because yeah. you don't. You don't want anything that makes us, you know. Have to reflect quite quite as quite as much, you know, because it's it's easier to just keep the train going, you know, as opposed yeah. to like come back. You know, I liken it a lot to you know that silence and being uncomfortable with that silence. Is you know I've said this on the show before, but you know that when you have to go home uh, at the at the end of a gig, and especially if you're not going home to somebody else who you know kind of fills that silence, even mm. if they're sleeping already, which most of the time, you know, if we're going home to somebody, they're yeah. well asleep because they have a nine to five and <laughs> we're right, you yeah. know the nine to five, but the opposite nine to five, you know? <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, that helps, but, but it's that thing where you really have to be okay with yourself because when you go home after a gig at one, two, three a.m., there's no hustle and bustle, there's no crowd, there's no accolades, there's no, there's no nothing. It's just mm. like, are, are you, are you not not even content with yourself, but are you comfortable mm. with yourself? Are you comfortable with that silence? Are you comfortable with that vulnerability? Um, and that's something I really had to focus on in the past year, right? Because yeah. I mean, it's like when you when that gets taken away from you, you mm. know, and you keep the same sleep schedule for the first three months of the pandemic, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but it's just the same old, same old. It's Groundhog's Day. I mean, that's that's a lot to deal with. That's a lot yeah. mentally to deal with. Spiritually, I mean, what do, mentally. What, what do you do? I mean, like, I mean, is it is it like you? Because I mean. I have plants. I mean, I you know. I mean, I go and I. I mean, that's one way I. Um, I. Um, or you know, I, I mean, I pedal around in the crib. You know, what yeah. I mean, I like, but but like the plants. You know, Wait, like plants. Oh yeah. Oh man, yeah. Because I noticed you like like when we just sat down. You know, before we were rolling, you kind of like yeah. touched the succulent and like. Yeah. Okay. So so yeah. tell me about that. I mean that's I mean that's just it. I mean mm -hmm. I look I mean especially since the pandemic, you know I've gotten yeah. really close with my plants. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, you sure. know and um uh, and I mean that's I mean you got to find you know something like you know yeah I mean because unwinding after a gig if it was a great night if it was a terrible night you know 
it's like you gotta go home and yeah you gotta deal with yourself you know yeah. and like damn I, I shouldn't have oh, I did oh, you know and I mean and, and it's it's we we as individuals yeah we uh yeah we beat ourselves up over nothing you know yeah. a lot of times you know what I mean it's like kind of accepting that as like the gospel yeah. um, that it's not as bad as we think. It's like, I don't even want to mention this, this cat's name. I mm -hmm. won't either. Sure. But, you know, I um, I got my first tour um, in 99, and, uh, and Roy uh, came through town. Mm -hmm. You know, he was coming through town quite a bit then. Uh, Roy Hargrove. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. and he called me up, and and, um, and I go and pick him up, and, you know, and I had all this, I got, got this, um, um, all these CDs, they wasn't labeled, no names, you know, just like, learn these tunes, you know? Oh, my gosh. And I was just like, ah. Oh. He brought those to you? No, no, this okay. is, um, like, like, I, he, 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 he calmed me, you know, because, you know, I keep touching this mic. He calmed me down, you know. I mean, I, I well, when he got into town, I was just like, I, I'm going out on the road, and I don't, you know, I fly out in two days. Or something. Oh, I got you. Yeah. I learned all, you know, kind of learned all this music. I don't know what song is what, you know. And, yeah. And um, and and I was kind of tripping, you know, not knowing if I was gonna be able to deliver, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I did my part, but some stuff was way too high, and and you know, and it's like I. Figured I, I worked it out, you yeah, know. sure. But I was, um, I was tripping, but you know, I mean, shit, you know, Roy tell you, man, you know, man, you got this, sense. It ain't gonna, <laughs> this ain't, you know, that, that, this ain't nothing, you know. Yeah. And, and sure enough, you know, got there and it was just like, I did my homework and, yeah. and it was, um, easy breezy. And I, I'm, I'm trying to think of how, why I brought that, oh. Uh, up. Well, we were talking about just uh, talking about Roy. We were talking about being okay with yourself when you come home at the end of the night. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, getting you know, like having 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 you know that that positive, especially somebody that you respect, you know, like, and then you know, just tell you, oh, you're okay, baby. You know, yeah. <laughs> you could, you know, I mean, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. like that, you know, that's. That's what we need. It's that validation every once in a while that we need to like keep us going on. You know, I yeah. think uh, especially for jazz musicians, it's this this feeling of like, you know, where you need you need a lot uh, to deplete you, um, mm -hmm. but you just need a little bit to bring you back up to one hundred percent. That's it. You know, yeah, absolutely. and like fill that joy quota. Uh, yeah. You know that you need to hit so that way you can go back out and because because you know um, there's a another comedian that. Um, I find a lot of parallels between between music and and, mm. and comedy, um, just in delivery. And I mean, just like art forms in general, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's no exception. I mean, you could acting and and drama and and and, and you know art like the physical you know the paintings and such. But um, there's another person who I talk a lot about uh, whose name is is Bo Burnham, um, and he just released a, a thing called Inside uh, that has been you know just like raved about. But you know for I started watching him when I was in the fifth grade when he was on just like on YouTube and he was just like a you know a 17 year old 18 year old making funny videos and his whole thing is kind of like tearing down being like let's stop this whole you know this tonight show like the entertainment is then pulling a or like getting a, a a purse full of skittles and throwing it into a basketball hoop like is this entertainment like that kind right. of thing and like trying to break that down and also say like like we are people, you know. Uh, uh, again, I, I've mentioned this before, so people who are repeat, like watchers of the show, know this by heart now. But you know, in the end of his second to last special, he talks. He does this like thing where it's like he's got auto tune on his voice, like he's trying to do like the Kanye rant thing. He was like, "Yeah, I went to the Yeezus tour," and like he put auto tune on his voice and talked about his problems, and he's being ironic and he said, "I don't have as high stakes as Kanye, but I have problems." and talks about the person at Chipotle rolling the burrito too big so it all, everything spills out and mm. like he can't fit his hand inside a Pringles can because it's too small and he oh, wants to have a kid so they can fit their hand inside a Pringles <laughs> and then like the song comes down like it breaks down instead of like the big massive kind of electronic thing and 
he says, you know, I can sit here and talk, you know, pretend that my biggest problems are Pringle cans and burritos, but the truth is my biggest problem is you to the audience. I want to please you, but I want to stay true to myself. Mm. I want to give you the night out that you deserve, but I want to say what I think and not care what you think about it. A, a part of me loves you, a part of me hates you, a part of me needs you, a part of me fears you. I don't mm. think that I can handle this right now. And he says, come and watch the skinny kid with the steadily declining mental health and laugh as he attempts to give you what he cannot give himself. And the special is called Make Happy. And it's just like wow. the most concentrated, yeah, I know, right? Right? Yeah, like it, I feel the exact right same there. way. Wow. And it's just, and you know, I, I will just sob watching it. And people will be like, what are you crying at a comedy show? But it's like, we don't, a lot of people don't realize that as performers, I mean, yeah, we're living like an incredibly privileged lifestyle that we are able to do what we want to do and we're not working a desk job. But at the same time, in order to be a performer, like, yeah, you got to have thick enough skin, like I said, where it doesn't like, it takes a lot to deplete you, but a, just a little bit of good to, to, to fill you back up. Mm -hmm. But it is that drain, mm -hmm. even though it takes a lot to drain you down to like rock bottom, doesn't make it any less like tumultuous or hard to deal with, you know? Right. And one of the things I love about Bo is that he like, he's, you wow. know, it, we were talking about this that before, that, um, you know, music and art has been made a commodity and a very kind of like, you give me, I give you. I pay $20 at the door, you give me a night out. Mm -hmm. But it's it's like, yeah, that's like the, the, the business fundamentals, whatever we have to go through in order to live and pay bills, but it's so much more than that. And mm -hmm. the moment we start treating musicians as if they are like human beings with mm -hmm. thoughts, feelings, emotions, and, and, and et cetera, that's when we're going to be able to I don't know, it, it, I'm, I'm really just like rambling on a tangent, but it's, it's just about empathy, man. It's yeah. about empathy and like understanding and grace and, and all of these things. And it's so beautiful to hear, you know, about, you know, especially when you're overwhelmed and then somebody who is such a formidable force who, you know, I want to hear more about that because I know you went to Booker T. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, there's such incredible people that have come out of there. And then yeah. you were just within a few years of, Roy, so were you close during high school, or did that happen? Well, I mean, after? I was a freshman when he was a senior. Okay. You know, and uh, I mean, he was in and out of school a lot, but he always, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I never want to be annoying, you know. So I mean, I pick his brain here and there, you know, and I, I mean, yeah, he, he was, he was, he was, <laughs> yeah, he used to borrow my trumpet, you know, mm. and. Um, but you know, he was my introduction to jazz. I played classical. Okay. Like I mean, like one. I mean, I, you know, I, since I've you know moved into my career, that, yeah. You know, it's like I'm, I I've, I found all this music, and it's just like <laughs> fantasy and deep I handle. You know, yeah, it's just like yeah. all this. You know, and it's like I used to play that. You know? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> It's like, why are we like just that are like, yeah. or, you know, just, and, and I, you know, I remember the moment me and Miss Brown, you know, me and piano company, you know, accompaniment, that's what got me into arts. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, seeing, I remember the day, you know, I had my dad drop me off, um, Early and they used to have jam sessions. Keith mm. Loftus and, and Keith. I mean, I was just a bunch yeah. of cats that was already in the scene. Whitney Russell, you yeah. know, uh, uh, and uh, you know, I, well, that well, actually, that happened after you know I heard Roy. I was it was during lunch and I, um, and you know, we used to have these adjudicators come in mm. and you know judge the band. And Roy, um, he was there. He was he was playing Skylark, man, and. I was used to just, you know, reading and memorizing, you know, music. But I, you know, I, was, I heard him, the tone, first of all, you know, and then it's yeah. like the soul element behind it. And then, you know, just that expression that, 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 you know, filled the room. And I mean, man, it hit my heart. I cried. I mean, it was one of the most beautiful moments, yeah. I mean, I've ever had yeah. yet today, you know. And, um, and I was just like, right then, it's just like, well, yeah. this is what I'm doing. <laughs> Sold, you know. <laughs> Got him, you know. Done deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, you know, but at arts, you know, they won't let you, that that couldn't be the focus until your senior year. So, okay. you know, it was just like, I did all the things, you know, to like try to figure out what was going on with yeah. the music, you know, 
and, and Roy would, and, and you know, my old cats would, would help me out, you know, like yeah. how to trade forwards or, yeah. you know, or how to learn scales and put licks on the end of them or the beginning, you know, yeah. how to have fun with, yeah. like, what was, like, by the book, you know, the classical thing, like, yeah. you know, it's just like, nah, you know, make this your own, you know. And, um, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, Ron, I mean, very supportive. I mean, everybody else was too. Yeah. You know, um, but, um, yeah, Ron would, but yeah, like I was saying earlier, he would come and um, he would borrow my trumpet, man, and, and I'd see my horn. <laughs> and Ron would be like, yeah. I'll see steam coming out the yeah. bell. He's just like, he's about to break my shit. <laughs> I mean, y'all sweating at home. Yeah. <laughs> she was digging it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got to go back to him. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> oh. God. <laughs> yeah, Roy, you know. Yeah, he, uh, so he changed when, a bunch of lives, man. Yeah. When when was it that, you know, because obviously, I mean, that, that that's intimate, but like, how did that? How did that rela- relationship uh, uh, foster over, over the years? Well, you know, man, he would come. You know, he would come through, and and um, yeah, like I said, you know, he called me when he come to town. You know, that was what Sixth Street was happening. You know, when mm-hmm. they actually had decent stuff, live music. You sure. know, that's what that's you know that's kind of how I um, I kind of um, start developing a name here. Yeah, was like six nights a week. Go to Sixth Street, you know. Yeah, it's right, like right, I right, bop right, around, right. you know, and I don't, you know, I don't care what kind of music it is, you know. Yeah. And I just figure out, you know, try to see if I dig it, and yeah. and um, and so you know, like you'd have, you know, real, you know, famous bands, you know, like mentors. I mean, heroes come through yeah. town back then, you know. And Roy would come through pretty frequent, you know, and um. Man, yeah, you know, and we'd hook up, and yeah. you know, and I'd still be picking his brain about like playing high, and, 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 or, or this, this, and that. And he always complimented me on my sound, and, and he just say, "You know, yeah, you got to play high, you know, yeah, you gotta just, just play pretty, you know, just man, man you know." Um, so yeah, I mean, like throughout, you know, um, yeah, if he was here or if I was somewhere. Um, I, I didn't really never. I never saw him out like um, like when I was out on tour or something. We never connected yeah, like sure. that. But like normally when he came home, yeah, you know, um, everybody would like go to Sambucas or something down the Deep Ellum, and yeah, and you know he would show up and all the cats that were you know in school or traveling to come home for Christmas or yeah right and then you know you have all these super bad cats yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the night of the cookers you know yeah. it's like, <laughs> oh man, um, Shelly Carroll. We don't know. Yeah. You know Shelly? Uh, so I don't know Shelly personally. I've, I've I've seen him play obviously because he's Houston, right? Yeah, and, and right. I'm from right. Houston area, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean he's a yeah he's another like major influence. Um, but like you know yeah you get those <laughs> you get Shelly and like and Roy you know yeah. and, and, and and you know just it's it's a. It's a gang of, of just bad cats up in Dallas that, um, I mean, yeah, they need to be, they need to be, they need to come here. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. So um, you, you were up in, in in Dallas. When did you come down? Did you go straight down to Southwest Texas State? Or they, and that's what something we have in common is I I did my undergrad. I actually got an opera studies degree. Well, it was music education with a focus in in, in, in classical performance. You know, uh, but uh, you know. So I guess we actually had you know somewhat of uh, the similar yeah. degree plan. Uh, so did you go straight from from Dallas I down would, to Southwest Texas State? No, I ended up going. I went to Weather for Junior College. Okay. For, yeah, like out of out of high school. I mean, out of yeah, out of high school. And um, I mean, you know, and, and you know, a bunch of cats that was at Arts, they went there before they went. And I mean, man, it was. I, that's where I learned like the the beauty of like, you know, um, like unity. Like yeah. you know, it was a, you know big band, and we, I mean we 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 eat together. We shared together. We get on each other's ass. We fought. You know, we yeah. we we were. You know, we were. 
we were tight as a big band unit, you know. Yeah. Wasn't, you know, not clean, not the cleanest band, but we swung, you yeah, know. Yeah, sure. And we, you know, beat North Texas a few times, you know, yeah. like in their competitions. And, uh, but, but yeah, that, that kind of got me into, um, well, honing in, you know, like um, the hustle of, like, I mean, I, from, from, from knowing how to approach, you know, um, yeah, trading fours and this, yeah. this, and that. We go to Jackson Pizza Parlor, you know, UT up in, yeah. and yeah, no, I go there, and then all these bad cats would be there, and, and it's like, you know, that school taught me, uh, yeah, how to, how to, I mean, the hustle and, and you know, and, and, and the language and the etiquette of, 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 yeah. of um, music. So, yeah, I went down, I went there for um, two years and a half, and then I got recruited, um, got a scholarship. During like TMEA, Keith yeah. Lincoln, you know, he heard me and he was just like, yeah, I need a scholarship. Oh, it was Keith, Keith at the time? Keith he Lincoln? was, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. He was, yeah, before he had, you know, all the white hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he went white, you know? <laughs> Oh man, I love Keith, man. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, so I did that, and then I came down here, and and um, and then I was, you know, so south, you know, San Marcos, and I was coming up here playing all the time. You yeah, know? I was about to say, man, like how how quick into your time at Texas State or well, Southwest Texas, you know, one of the same. Uh, how quickly into your time there were you were you starting to make make your way up to Austin? You know, just like because that that's very similar to what I was doing. I mean, starting my second semester of my freshman year, I mean, I would sometimes I'd wear a suit to school because like the big band that I was playing with at the time that ended up being kind of given, I was given the reins to a little bit, mm. um, uh, you know, I would start gigging with them and I'd, I'd play, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, go to class, you know, for whatever it was, eight hours. And then mm. I'd be like, you know, just like gripping the desk and then they're like, all right, class dismissed. And then I'd like, book it and I had to run up the hill, you know, past like grins and all this different yeah. stuff. And I'm like sweating and I'm hoping that I'm not staining my like white shirt with the black <laughs> suit on or whatever. I'd throw my stuff in the back seat and then I'd like speed to Austin trying to make the, the wedding gig or whatever it was. But like yeah. how quickly for you were, were you were you kind of moonlighting in, in Austin? I mean pretty much out the gates, you know. Like uh even when we came down um, you know, so me and uh, Fred Sanders, mm. piano player friend of mine, you know, mm. came down to check out the, you know, check out, well, we're going to go to school down. Yeah, sure. And we heard about the elephant room, you know, and so that was the first place we dropped in. And, um, and we, you know, they didn't you know, let us sit in. And, and then at the time, it was like this band, the gingerbread men, you know. Yeah, yeah and it was like this, um, Bootsy, you know, it was like this funk band that, that, yeah. that I mean, they came out as a band, you know, yeah. and we're hanging out at the elephant room, you know, and then um, uh, we got a played and, 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 and who was Bob Meyer at the time, and I think John Fremgen, I think mm. he might have been on bass, or either it was yeah. Evan Arredondo. Um, Bob Meyer was playing like saxophone, trumpet, and piano. It's just like Bob Meyer. I didn't know Bob, uh, uh, obviously, but man, I listened to that Artscape record, and I'm oh, like, man, man, he's a bad. He, he was a bad. Serious, dude. like yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. You, I mean, you look at him, you can tell he's a jazz cat. You yeah, know, just <laughs> the way his, his his demeanor, his his ism was just. I mean, it was. Yeah, he uh, he was a, a brilliant, brilliant cat. But. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, I mean, I think through that night, that kind of opened up, like, there's a new cat, you know, there's a couple new cats in town. You yeah, know? sure. But that night, gingerbread, man, you know, we, me and Fred were going to stay in the car because we were broke, you know, yeah. just like going, you know, and, and visit the campus um, the next day. But they, you know, um, Henry and them, Henry and Invisibles, you know, yeah. that's, yeah, his, Henry's doing his own thing. Uh, no, but he was like the band leader of the Gingerbread Man. Um, 
he and you know and their crew they had this house it was like Fred I mean yeah. it, it, you know every, you know a lot of cats were staying there they sure, were in the sure, bed sure, you sure, know sure. and they let us stay with them and just like take a blanket you know? <laughs> yeah, take yeah. a blanket yeah, and find a, a spot yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. Yeah. Don't eat the last egg. Oh know? my god, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they cooked food. We played, hung out, and, and man, that was that's what sold me on Austin. Oh, cool. It was just like the the hospitality. I mean, like that never, that never happened to me at all. in Dallas anywhere. You know, yeah. that was like first time. Like y'all don't know me, and you know, this universal language is a real thing. You know, yeah, and like yeah, right. and um, yeah, they um. They, they're, they're one of the influences of why I got here. But like from then on, you know, I mean, I joined that band, Gingerbread Man, and then um, Cedar Street used to have this band, um, King Valentine, like oh. kind of Dick Tracy okay. music. It was, you cool. know, fun, you know, yeah. kind of squirrely, totally like different, odd meter, you know, yeah. tunes. And, and, uh, and then, you know, start playing with Elias. So about a year in, I was already, you know, like kind of feeling my way. And then yeah. that, being down in San Marcos, it's, yeah. I'll play with everybody, you know? <laughs> I appreciate you around. saying San Marcos. I get tons of shit for it because everybody's like, where? I'm like, San Marcos. They're like, oh, San Marcos? Like, because, oh. yeah. you know, San Marcos? I'm like, so I appreciate you with the L. <laughs> San Marcos, I yeah, see, yeah. I see you, I see you, man. <laughs> <In> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Man, so so, what year did you come down to Texas State? Ninety three. Ninety three. Okay, so like, man, were you just that, born? Uh, I, <laughs> for the sake of not uh, incriminating myself, no, I was I was not born yet. I was not born oh. yet in that year. But I appreciate you oh. at least thinking I was at least that old. Uh, oh. No, man, I was born in ninety six. Uh, yeah, I'm a little baby. A little yeah, baby. Happened. The beard's not fooling anybody. Yeah. But it at least helps throw off the scent just a little bit. Uh, no, <laughs> no kidding. Uh, but man, I mean, like, so you start coming up here and you start playing, and it's crazy. What was it, 97 that the mayor had procro- proclaimed Ephraim Owens Day? <laughs> so, like, you go into town, and within four years, how does one get? Uh, an Ephraim Owens day. How does one get a day? Like, what, what, what was that ascension like? Just like, and I don't mean that in any su- sort of like superficial way, but I mean, obviously things must have just like taken off. Like it was like out of the gate. I was you know? taken off out of yeah. the gate. Yeah. I mean, for real. It was just like, I mean, I just, you know, I, I was playing all the time. Yeah. I mean, not even, not even gigging, just I playing, you know, yeah. six nights a week I'd be, you know, uh, you know, I was just still trying to figure out what I wanted to, you know, what I was digging, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I, uh, and, you know, I guess through somebody was paying attention, you yeah. know, that he's doing, he's, this cat is just all over. I don't I, yeah. I guess that's why, you know. Yeah. It's like donating to the community, you know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to play music. You're you know? just trying to play music. I yeah, mean, yeah. for real. Well, man, let's uh, let me ask you a couple couple of very quick questions. Uh, the second to last question we always ask on the show is if there's a record that may be your favorite of all time, could be what you're listening to this week, could be what you listened to this morning before you pulled up. Um, mm. What what? Sean Michael you... Giddings, Red Willow. Dude, that album. I, yeah. Is transcendent, dude. I can't believe it. I, I truly cannot believe it. I tell you, it, it's, it's, it's been my home improvement music. Mm. And you know, I get locked into like, uh, like just, I mean, I, I, <laughs> if somebody's hanging with me, it's like, this is gonna happen, you know? So we're gonna listen to this album <laughs> until we go to sleep, you know? <laughs> you know what it is? Like I listen to, you know, I've been listening to this album and and it's like he's touching all the bases. You know? Oh man, it's so perfectly balanced, man. Yeah. Dude, I, I so um, Sean's gonna do the show in in, in a uh, couple weeks, and mm. so I was, you know, I try to do some notes, but again, like you know, I, I have a bunch of notes here, but I haven't referenced like any of them, you know, because I, I, I like a, you know what? It's like a set list. Yeah. It's like just in case I want to have things that I am interested in, but. Maybe I don't talk yeah. about any of them because, <laughs> yeah. ever, because everything's great in the moment, you know. Right. But uh, you know, I was making some notes on on just for for Sean's episode, and 
was watching his monk show, man, and just I hadn't listened to Red Willow yet, and people were like, like Adrian had made that really lovely post and was like, everybody needs to go listen to this now. This is like incredible, and I was like, yeah, it's on my list. But I, you know, I, I also whenever I know something's gonna be really, really great, or it's like somebody who's like I care a lot about, I don't like to just put it on when I'm busy. I want to wait mm. until I'm like. Cause, Cause, then it's gonna sully the experience, you know. Cause, yeah. like, there's so much about sensory stuff that mm. that you attach to a certain memory, um, mm. or, or, or a memory like with sensory things that you attach to like music or, or, or films or whatever. Like, you can remember, like, I remember where I was when I saw Toy Story two, you know. Oh, right. Uh, right. Uh, so, uh, like, down to the theater number. <laughs> it was like oh, theater right. eight in Starplex <laughs> cinemas, <laughs> ten, you know, in Lake Jackson, Texas, whatever. So uh, that's a throwback, um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So so but I was just watching his monk show and I hadn't heard the material before, and I again a, a broken record, but I, I just couldn't believe it. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like from uh, yeah, track three, track seven, nine, eleven, twelve. Um, yeah, I mean, I like eleven, twelve. I I just put that in, in rotation. Yeah. You know, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, like two weeks ago, well, I was like, man, you know, I, I, and I'm you know, I'm pubbing his album on, on my gig, you know, so I hired do four. I was just like, man, I want, you know, I yeah. want. Uh, I, I asked Sean, I was like, man, uh, you know, on the Tuesday gig, you know, I, I want to, you know, you to play a few of your songs. I get do four, you know, and Panky, and I don't think Panky could do it, but Ryan Hagler, you know, he yeah, was, yeah, so he did it, and and. And um, yeah, so you know, and, and he played um, yeah, he played three tunes. They played three tunes, and I sat in on one of them. And I've been listening to it. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't, you know, dealt yeah. with it at all. And I was, you know, and I jumped up there thinking it was in a, <laughs> in a different key. Oh no! <laughs> and yeah, it was like a, a G flat. And I was just like, oh, oh no! Oh. Mm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one course. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry for that disruption. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't add nothing to anything. You know, and back to the regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah. Let's rewind the tape. Just delete. Yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, man, that that album, that um, my plants love it. Yeah. Oh, they do, man. I mean, yeah. for real, it's like they 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 spring up, and, you know. They they don't even need water. <clears throat> just once just, a day, yeah, not even no sunlight, no water. Just just turn red it willow. on and just let it run, you know. And they and they um they yeah, see them all. Like, <laughs> oh, that's I'm sure it's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, oh man. And that's been a, yeah. That's been um. Yeah. That's been, that's been the album. Yeah, very yeah. cool, man. Well, uh, the last question. This is this is really fun. I always love hearing these stories. Is um, uh, we all have gigs from hell where things go totally sideways, and we just cannot believe what's happening before our eyes. Uh, you know, throughout your time, whether it was Cheryl Crow or Mumford and Sons mm -hmm. or playing here in town or Tedeschi Trucks Band or wherever, whoever. You know, mm -hmm. do you have any gig that stands out as a gig from hell? Man, I can't even see. Oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's that Eureka <laughs> moment. I love it. All right. Hey, man. So, we, so when I was with, with Cheryl Crow, um, we were doing <laughs> we were doing an encore. Okay. Uh, we and we were over in um in um in um uh, Norway in Aarhus. Um, so we you know in, in in Europe, overseas, and um. So you know we you know we play our last song we get off stage and um, you know I had Shelly Carroll on the gig with me yeah. you know and um, so we go back out for like the, you know the hit song yeah, you sure. know and man I'm climbing up these stairs <laughs> Bam! Oh. I mean I, I I bit it you know I, I fell on my horn and everything you oh. know and I mean I laid down the doll a doll brown hall you know. Uh, you know, I see, you know, because you, you heard the, the, the thump on yeah. the stage. It's like a hollow stage. And uh, and I mean, I'm down there on the ground. I'm like, I just, I just fell in front of all these people. 
And then Shelly, you know, he's trying to make, you know, try to, you know, come up. And, <laughs> and he comes over and he's like, <laughs> acting like he's doing like <laughs> some Chest <CG>. compression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then I got up and I was just, and then I'm looking, you know, doll shoulders. He's just, <laughs> he's just dying laughing. Uh, you know, and, and, and I, you know, I got up and I, I played. And I mean, I was laughing, but I was, uh, I was crying too, you know. Just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I fell, I fell hard, and I got up, and, and and a lot of people didn't even know what had happened, you know. As soon as we got done, oh man, I got back to the hotel. And I was just like YouTube. <laughs> oh no, was it up? Sure, was it up pro, there? No, that's why. I, no, it wasn't. You know. Okay. But it would have been YouTube worthy because <laughs> it was a big. I mean, it was a big scene, man. Dude. Oh man, I, I fell up the stairs, you know, not down the stairs, walking. Up the stairs. Yeah. That's like that's some that's some uh, built-in humility. You have like a great night. You're like, man, I'm I'm it, man. Yeah, I, I'm, the I'm, cool. I'm the cat. I'm the cat. And cool. it's like it's like the universe or otherwise being like, yeah. calm down, <laughs> calm <Yeah>. down. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And that was my yeah. I, I was oh man, I didn't hear the end of that for a long time. Do you remember when? Uh, <laughs> I got one of those, and that was that was it. Oh and, man! Uh, oh, there's others, but oh man, yeah. <laughs> no man, that's a perfect one. That yeah, that was that one. was that was. I mean, you know, and it's like with Doyle too. You know, Doyle's like my he's like my big brother. You know, um, and you know, it's like I'm always feel like I'm always trying to. Cause he's such an odd bird, man. Yeah. You know, beautiful cat, just and genuine and straight up, man. You know, and it's just like, it's just always trying to, you know, prove. I don't yeah. know, you know, just yeah. like yeah, the big brother thing, you know. Yeah, sure. And then it's just like this, for him to be witness. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just it was. It was hilarious. I mean, and it's like he done, he wasn't holding back at all. I mean, his shoulders, he's just and he's looking back at me. Like, and just, I'm like, oh. and I'm laughing and crying, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how it was, you know? Oh, man. But that's it, man. I'm, total yeah. total balance of the human experience, man. Yeah, well, you got to get knocked on your butt every now and then. Man, do you have mm. anything that you want to plug, like website or any any uh, shows or anything like that you want to plug? Mm. Well, tomorrow we're doing, um, me, Sean, and, um, and Ryan, we're doing um, the Pershing, that um, Candlelight series. Oh, that, cool, uh, man. Nice. Yeah, we're playing at, um, I think we're playing at that 8. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, just an hour. But um, Continental Club every Tuesday. Every you know, Tuesday. We'll be man. back upstairs starting in August, I think. 10 years, right? Or no, not not 10 years, over 10 years. 14, 13, 14. 14. Well, I've been playing at the Elven Room since 94. Jesus. <clears throat> no. Standing the test of time. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, this town is treating me really well, you know. That's beautiful, mm. man. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful treatment for a beautiful cat, man. Thank Ephraim. you, man. I, right I, back I, at you. I got to thank you so much for being here, man. Mm. This is this has truly been the best possible way to, to ease myself into that vacation next, no, next week. Man. So Yeah. Man, Six Ephraim. days in. Yeah. Dude. 